Hi, Chris Wallace from Second Swing. We're in the tour van today at Minnetonka. I've got my colleague Thomas Campbell with me. Thomas, we're going to have some fun today. We're going to do something a little different. We've been doing a lot of testing videos, comparison videos. Uh, you've been hitting a lot of shots with some different clubs. We're going to switch it up today and we're going to do a little bit of an old versus new. And one of the neat things about Second Swing is that anything you're looking for new, we can take care of you, but we've also got a lot of great used clubs. We also get a lot of neat tour issue type clubs sent in on trade. Sometimes people maybe don't even know what they have. We've got a club like that today. This is a Titleist Pro Trajectory Prototype F305 Fairway Wood, which was immensely popular on tour in around 2004, 2005. Bunch of tour guys played it. Rumor has it there are only a few, a couple hundred of these ever made. Oh, never, wow. Yeah. Never released to the public. <laughs> so we're going to have you hit this today. Yep. We're going to put it up against the brand new TS2, which you guys are having a lot of success fitting players with. Titleist is having a lot of success with it out on tour. And we're going to kind of see what happens. And we don't really know what's going to happen. We don't. I'm actually really interested to see what happens, you know, Typically what we've seen with the newer technology these days obviously is probably about what is that about 14, 15 years of technology difference between that club and this one is we've seen a little bit maybe a little bit more forgiveness but we really be interesting just to see what really happens today in the in this test. So we might as well just let's get after and see really what happens. Yeah, this is gonna be fun. I can't wait to see how these numbers turn out. All right, let's do it. All right, Thomas, so we're gonna start with the T S two. Okay. We've got this at fifteen degrees. Yep. I think we got a hazardous smoke. In there, 80 grams. Yep. So same weight as what we're going to hit with the with the prototype yeah. head. So there's no really not too much of a bias between the two clubs. And obviously yep. the prototype won't have adjustability, being circa 2005 yep. or so. So we've got this in the A1. Got setting. that at A1. Yep. Just standard standard setting, standard loft. Yep. All right. This is going to be fun. I'm interested to see what happens. <laughs> I'm a little nervous, honestly, to be <laughs> honest, hitting an older club. But we'll see what happens. Yeah. We start out with a more forgiving club. Well, maybe more forgiving club first, right? Good start. Uh, chance to kind of get loose here a little bit. That's the ball flight you like. It is, yep. Have you done uh, much testing with the TS fairways? I haven't actually done much testing with the TS fairway yet. No, yeah. I have not. Titleist, they deserve a ton of credit for the TS metal woods across the board. They really stepped it up with those. Yep. Well, I just did put the TS3 driver in my bag, so there's definitely oh, some, there you, you know, some proof right there. Shout out for Titleist. Shout out for Titleist, yep. That was maybe a little bit, yep. I was gonna go a little further, but a little bit further left. Let's hit uh, one more yep. with that, then we'll switch, and then we'll come back and do four more with that and okay. get eight shots total with each one. I have not hit many fairway woods over the winter time. It's the one club I haven't hit a lot of, so I'm not surprised that I'm miss hitting it a little bit. It's that maybe a little bit more good. ball speed. That was better. And we've talked in the past that, you know, for you, Fairway wood is maybe it's sort of the one slot in your bag that you kind of always yep. sort of are searching. Searching, always searching, yep. I don't know what it is with me and fairway wood, but I just always struggle to find something that I you know, really, really like. So I think we can anticipate at a minimum we're going to have a very different sound uh, coming from these two clubs. It'll be interesting <laughs> to see. This is the older with the bore through shaft. Yep. Probably going to be a little more dull and muted. Uh, going to be interesting. But what were your impressions uh, of the TS2 there with just that limited sample. It felt test. pretty good. The last shot I definitely, you know, hit a little bit better. Maybe it was just, like I said, maybe haven't hit a lot of fairy woods over the winter time, so I was just trying to figure it out. Yeah. Um, but felt pretty pretty solid off the face. You know, I'm in, like I said, I'm interested to see what this feels like and sounds like. Yeah. Um, but obviously it maybe felt a little bit lighter. There's maybe that compared to what maybe I'm used to with, with other clubs. So, yeah. All right, well, let's give the prototype a try. 
Uh, okay. Again, this is probably about circa 2005. Uh, right. So if we go about 13 years of technology, 14 years of technology here. Yeah, rumor has it only a few hundred of these were ever made. It's um, actually a pretty clean looking golf club. Good looking club oh. at a dress. And then the blue board 83 shaft was, you know, I mean, still popular to this day, but at the time yep. was sort of the hot shaft in golf. Okay. All right, so here we go, back in time. All right. That was actually pretty good. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, that was pretty good. What'd you think? Yeah, I could definitely hear that more <laughs> It was like a muted sound yeah. almost, like it was dull, was like dull thud, and yeah, yeah. thud, it was a thud, yeah. Well, I do really like those numbers. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I might need to uh, be talking to Titleist here about their technology. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> um, very interesting. Yeah, so it's far. really interesting. That was maybe a little bit more of the toll. Yeah. That one, so I definitely miss it. There is something really interesting yep. about old versus new. It you is. Know. I know. Right away I knew I misset that one and kind of just do dove out of the sky. And the spin popped way up. But obviously, yep. you know, with the, with the newer golf clubs, you know, even the manufacturers will admit these days, what they can do in the center of the face is so regulated, but yep. where it makes the big difference is when you start with the miss hits. And that's a pretty good example right there. Yep. Let me hit one more of this and I'll dive back to the TS2 as well. Sounded solid. Yeah, that was good there. Three out of four isn't bad. No, <laughs> very interesting. Yep. Let's get the TS2 back in there. Perfect. Getting a little looser, see how this does. All right, back to the TS2. Head size definitely seems bigger, that's for sure. A little left, a little lower yeah. spin, but the result's the longest shot we've seen. Yep. That was a better swing. Yeah, really good there. That wasn't too bad either. Another really good swing there, yeah. All right, let's hit three more with that prototype club. This definitely feels a little bit more forgiving, that's for sure. Yeah. The good shots with this were really, really good, but just yeah. notice that it just feels just a little bit more forgiving off the face. And that's, to, you know, again, as we discussed, that's probably to be expected given yep. what they've been able to do with weighting and expanding the sweet spot, thinning mm -hmm. out the face and some yep. of the different things. but. It is interesting to see how the F305 is competing on center strikes. A lot yeah, of people it maybe, was. and me, even myself, wasn't sure that it would keep up, but it's pretty interesting. I'll be interested to see how these three do as you continue to get in a groove. Yeah, yep. Yeah. All right, let's see three more with the prototype head.
didn't quite catch that one either. Yeah, and that's where you're seeing the drop off. Yep. All right, I gotta get one more good swing with this club. But yeah, definitely notice the miss hits not are a little bit more punishing. Yeah, and the big thing is the way the spin really yeah it jumps, jumps up on the miss hits because there your ball speed and your your club head speed yeah, stay the same pretty much. Well, yeah. the same. Yeah, it's just that off center strikes just kicking the spin up, killing distance. sounded pretty solid. Yeah, I was pretty sure I wanted to hit one really good with that club. And that was, that was probably the best one I've, that I felt that I hit with the uh, prototype head versus the, you know, the TS2 head. So Very interesting. Yep. I we guess. You can definitely see right here, we got that grouping of the good shots. So the yellow, that was the, um, the prototype. Yeah. So four pretty solid shots. However, we do notice what happened with the miss hits. Yeah. Quite a bit shorter. Um, you know, obviously you can see that the TS2 was a little bit more wider spaced, but it did go a little bit further. It was just a little bit more forgiving on, the, on those miss hits. Sure. For sure, so. Overall, I guess maybe some of what you would expect. You know, this was a club that was played on tour, uh, the prototype, so it's no surprise that when you hit it in the middle of the face, it's really yep. good. On the flip side, you also see the advantages of what's going on technology-wise. Yeah, like even when I think the first couple of shots when I look down at this club, I like really, really forced myself. I'm like, I've got to hit this good because the club head just looked a little bit smaller and more compact. However, what we're seeing is, yeah, over the years, technology forgiveness has increased in clubs. However, there are plenty of if there's plenty of equipment out there that is used that may be a couple years old that still are going to perform really, really well. Obviously, second swing, we're definitely involved in this second, the, the used golf clubs market, essentially. So there's a lot of equipment out there that can work for people that would that be used or new. Yeah. Yep. And I think the other thing worth pointing out, and it's such a big part of what we do, is, you know, with TS2, we have the option of using some different settings to even greater enhance what you're seeing in terms of performance, yep. as well as putting different shafts in there. We, that's another huge advantage, you know, if you're gonna invest the time, which everybody should, to come in and get fit. Yep, I have no doubt if I was gonna play around and adjust the TS2 fairway wood, obviously we've got those hosel settings to make it more upright, change the loft, flat. We've got the luxury to be able to do that with most technology these, these days. With these, this is just kind of bonded. It is what it is. Yeah. And then from there, you got to kind of figure it out. So that's the advantage of technology in 2019 versus 2005. So, Absolutely. Yep, yep. But as you said, you know, there are going to be opportunities to get used equipment that maybe fit your budget that will yep. still allow you to play really good golf, which is why we do what we do. Completely agree. Do want to take a quick look. I'm just curious, being a club fitter, I want to take a look at the spin rate numbers just to see what happened with regards to the 2005 prototype head and the TS2. So if you were going to look here, we'll notice what's interesting is my club speed was actually faster with the prototype F305. Yeah. One mile an hour faster. You think, oh, club speed, ball speed almost identical. So smash factor was very, very efficient with both of them. I'm usually pretty good at finding the middle of the club face. Launch was also very, very similar. But what we notice here with the prototype head is it spun about 600 revs more there on average. Also, the consistency was maybe just a little bit higher. So that would obviously include those, those miss hits in there showing that it just didn't really kind of perform, perform as well. So then you, if you took a look, look at distance, lost about five yards carry distance with the prototype versus the TS2. But you would notice about 10 yard difference between on, on average there. Now obviously the good shots with the prototype, they were great, but then miss hits, you know, we're only human, we're, you know, we're only human, we're going to have those miss hits in there. So that's why in the newer technology might have just helped there with a little bit of forgiveness. So. Yeah, and I mean the, the, the drop off being as significant as it was, you can't sugarcoat it, it is significant because if you're pulling a three wood on a par five 
and hitting a ball over water, say into a, a green, trying yeah. to get there in two, and you miss it, instead of you know hitting it in the left bunker it might and have a chance to get up and down for four, might end up in the water. You're yeah. maybe in the water, yeah. and then you're looking at six or seven. So. Agree. Yep. Yeah. But overall, pretty neat to see the way that club performed when you did hit it right in the middle. Yeah. So Thomas, we thought that was going to be fun, and it was fun. It was pretty enlightening in terms of some of what we saw numbers-wise. It was. Um, definitely we noticed that, yes, I can hit the older technology. You know, the good shots, they were amazing. They actually felt really, really good off the club face. Yeah, so I hit four really solid shots with the prototype head. Um, and then there was three shots there that were just a little bit mishit. And we just really noticed that I got punished. The ball didn't go nearly as far. The ball spun a lot. And it just, you know, those shots, especially if you're trying to carry water or carry a bunker, could be very punishing on a player. Yeah, it, it was pretty remarkable to see how big the drop off was. It gives you a new respect for what the manufacturers are doing today when you get outside of the center of the club face. But at the same time, it was also pretty neat to see just how well something like this could perform when you flushed it. Now, certainly a player like you is going to flush it more often than a player like me or a lot of our viewers. Yep. So the disparity is going to be even wider, say, for a more average golfer. But pretty neat. You know, we talked about this in the video. There's newer technology that can help you, but there's also older golf clubs out there, especially if you get fit get the right thing for you, it's a big part of what we do, that can still help you play better golf. Yeah, I definitely would agree. There's, you know, we're obviously in the business of selling new and used golf clubs. We started selling used golf clubs. So there's so many good used clubs out there. Um, one thing that comes back to me though is making sure you get fit for the right equipment. We talked about adjustability briefly with regards to these clubs. With the newer equipment, we have the ability to adjust the hosel, we have the ability to adjust the lie angle, the loft, the center of gravity on all these different club heads. There's so many different options in today's market compared to the older market. So that's why I'd say it's very, very important to have that ability to come in and get custom fit with us to get the right club that works for you best. So with the older clubs, essentially, we go back to 10 years older, essentially more, those were, you know, the hosels are fixed. So essentially the club is, you know, if it works for them, great. But if, you know, you can't really make too much adjustment to it. So that's one thing we do notice. In 2018, 2019, you know, we can adjust the golf, golf equipment to fit the specific player. Yeah, in, in fairness, if we had made some tweaks to the TS2 and taken it out of the A1 standard setting, we probably could have got you some more performance. But I think the big takeaway is, you know, come into a second swing store, check out everything we have to offer. You might find a real find like this in one of the bins. It may end up fitting you perfect, get you a great deal on a, a club that'll really work for you. And of course, we'll fit you for anything you buy from us. Yep, yep. whether it be new or used, we'll make sure we find the right fit for the player. Yeah, yep. well that was fun. It was really neat to see how these two performed. Yeah, it was very intriguing, that's for sure. Yep. Enjoyed it, Thomas, thanks. Yeah, thanks.